and to feel that I more feel that because I I thought in the beginning the discussion will be in in other direction but it's, it's in the open very open direction and I see and it's great it's great for me and for, and for our guests uh, so thank you very much I would like to invite our next presenter is from our Yena Center for Translation Studies postdoctoral uh, researcher. Uh, Dr. Uh, Luis Pena, in, uh, in his topic topic of his presentation, you can you can take my place. It's okay. Uh, his topic as presentation: multi multi uh, conflicts and reconciliation challenges, reflecting from a Colombian case. Please, uh, Dr. Pena. Thank you, uh, Benjamin and Francesco Martin for inviting me. I was a little bit afraid. Yeah, I think you need to share. No, okay. you need to share. Sure. And I was afraid to, that we maybe not have uh, some common points to, to share. And maybe you see me as an intruder in a conference on Ukraine. But was precisely the last presentation one interesting point in for for sharing experiences for for uh, for uh, let me see some let me make something here yes share this is okay okay okay. Let me let me stop by this. Okay. Okay. So, oh, as I was uh, telling you, uh, uh, there is an interesting uh, connection between uh, the Ukrainian case and all the, the cases uh, that we are uh, studying here in the Yena Center for Reconciliation, and one is precisely this of the the speciality of the reconciliation. And I want to uh, reflect on, on this. Uh, I uh, want to uh, present you the Colombian case, but as you will notice, there is many connections and those connections are also uh, opportunities to share, uh, not just uh, uh, knowledge about uh, the balance, uh, also uh, to know uh, how the people are innovating locally to promote reconciliation. And my presentation was organized, in, so to say, in an Aristotelian way. I uh, put five questions uh, to explain the the the. Uh, uh, the Colombian conflict and to reflect on the reconciliation challenges. And I would like to start by uh, showing you uh, Colombia. This is the, for, for you, uh, uh, Colombia is a South American country in the corner of South America. Um, the border countries are uh, Venezuela, Ecuador, Brazil, Peru, Panama, uh, with two coasts in the one in the Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. And these maps are showing something that I will uh, tell you. Uh, these are the places where are located the uh, new groups dissident of the peace agreement. I want, I want to tell you. Uh, this is just uh, some maps, for example, this map uh, with the red uh, colors shows uh, one dramatic case that is the uh, model of social leaders that are defending the peace agreements. But as I told you, uh, I would like to, uh, to talk with you about what is happening in Colombia and uh, um, with the hope that uh, reflecting on this, we can uh, find some interesting 
uh, um, uh, links of research. Um, uh, that is something in which the the, the GCRS is very is very engaged uh, is to to work on uh, trans uh, disciplinary studies, but also uh, in comparative studies. So, uh, what is happening now in Colombia? Uh, there is very complex. You know, we are in a moment after this signature of a peace agreement between the uh, guerrilla, the FARC, uh, the uh, armed the um, revolutionary armed forces of Colombia with the state. And uh, now this is the context uh, in which is happening five, six uh, uh, dynamics that are combined, that are contradictory. The first that there is a huge manifestations or demonstrations that combines the defense of this peace agreement uh, that uh, mention on are directly addressed to the uh, to the model to criticize the model uh, uh, the economic model is um, the extractive and neoliberal one the denunciation of police and army brutality uh, in this context also what is happening now in Colombia is also the, the modern or so, social leaders and massacres of young people. Uh, for example, since 2016, when the uh, peace agreement was signed, uh, there is a um, very sad uh, number of 750 leaders uh, modern for different groups um, in Colombia is, uh, after the signature of the peace agreement there are many groups disputing uh, the areas formerly controlled by by the FARC by the guerrilla and in this context has been also difficult the implementation of peace agreements there's risk all of course uh, the achievements made and the trust in the in the agreement, and uh, there is uh, hundreds of local reconciliation initiatives that are not understood by the rest of the society. This is probably one of the things that could be very clear connected what, uh, with with uh, the previous presentation, because these initiatives are uh, the main actors are uh, displaced people and uh, we are reflecting on what means uh, what, what is the content of this uh, of this uh, uh, initiatives of reconciliation and peace agreement and on peace building locally and we have found for example that people mobilize uh, a geographical imagination mobilize a uh, um, moral imagination that is translated in projects to uh, redefine uh, the relation with nature, to create a new landscape, to create a new territoriality, and uh, uh, to create a new everyday spatiality and a new sense of place. So, so uh, for me, it was very interesting for the, the last presentation because uh, uh, there, uh, there is an interesting uh, dynamic that we can share and we can uh, start to, uh, to research together. And also uh, one element is the very, is, uh, Colombia is a very divided society uh, around the sense of peace agreement. So there are uh, the, the, health, the health of the people are defending the agreement, and uh, the other health is against the peace agreement. And I will uh, show you why. And as I told you, I'm going to make five questions to uh, explain uh, why this context.
The first question is, uh, first, why? Uh, why the violin has increased at the same time that the, most, that the demonstrations in favor of peace agreements also has uh, uh, increased. Uh, the violence has uh, increased because the, the, uh, the right-wing government now uh, is not supporting the implementations and this has resulted in the deterioration of the, uh, of the security. Mm, basically, the right-wing government sees the agreement as a, a handling over the state to the international communism. So, uh, uh, in, the, in the current context, uh, you can see Colombia as one of the places in the world where, in certain way, uh, the Cold War has not ended because many of the political controversies are um, uh, are uh, mediated for this narrative of the existence of um, uh, conspirations between capitalists and communist forces. Uh, of course, the narrative has included uh, other elements that I cannot develop now. Uh, the uh, violence has increased also because there are many armed structures in disputes. For example, the FARC dissidences uh, are counted 23 groups among which there are disputes. There are not a single group. There are also guerrillas that has not signed uh, any peace agreements. There are uh, drug traffickers structures there are uh, also Mexican uh, drug traffickers, uh, and also uh, uh, offices of hitmen, that is the name that receive uh, these uh, organizations that sells their service of violence to uh, impose the project of different uh, actors and are actors that they have no uh, um, a specific uh, political point of view. They are just servicing to different proposals. Uh, uh, the guerrilla proposals, the narco, uh, the paramilitary groups, the landowners, etc. Uh, the analysis count 12 different groups uh, combating or disputing the uh, different areas of the, of the country. Uh, of course, the state has now developed a strategy to uh, contain the territorial struggles between these different actors. And uh, there, there is no stra strategy to control the illegal economies. Uh, and when we talk about the illegal economies, we are not talking ju uh, uh, just about an, um, uh, drug trafficking. We are talking about mining, illegal mining. We're trafficking, well, we're talking about uh, the uh, traffic of people and, uh, and the analysis also count around 31 illegal economies regulated violently in the whole territory. Uh, the murders uh, has been committed against social leaders who were visible heads of the land restitution. The land restitution is an, a key point of the, uh, of the peace agreements and leaders that represent uh, that are visible uh, of the uh, alternative uh, political parties and that support the implementation of the agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, this war, these uh, martyrs of social leaders can be described as a war of the local elites, the ranchers, landowners, drug traffickers, against the economic and political transformation that peace agreements opens. And 
the demonstration in support of peace process is because a high proportion of people uh, understand that the armed conflict is based on inequalities, social exclusion. Many of them understand that this inequality comes from the economic model, the neoliberal one, the neoliberal extractivist model, uh, the political exclusion, and the penetration of mafias in the state. So second question, second why. Take some time. The second why, what explained the existence of so many providers of violence in, in Colombia and the existence of peace initiatives? The peace accords is one of the most comprehensive in the history of peace, of peace accords in the, in the world. It is a process of reform that, uh, other, uh, that uh, include a lot of reforms and is different to the agreement signed in the past in, in Colombia and also in other uh, contexts. Um, and you can uh, uh, see this peace agreement of the 20 the, of the 2016 as a political act of reconciliation between a sector of the elite, the urban liberal, the bourgeois elite, with peace and indigenous and black communities, and there is a, um, there is a, uh, a social depth. Uh, that we uh, I will mention uh, later with the land reform. And in certain way, this peace agreement is a way to reconcile, but it's not a reconciliation of the whole society, it's the reconciliation of a part of the elite. And uh, the social leaders that has been, uh, are, has been uh, model for the, these uh, groups are peasants, black communities, indigenous communities, communities, and they are part of a long history of struggles for the right to the land and the cultural recognition. And uh, the existence of so many armed groups is part of the atomization of the drug cartels, the paramilitaries and different mafia organizations. Uh, we are we are returning in the time. Every every question is one returning in the time. When we talk about the the that the moment now is the atomization of drug cartels. Um, you maybe you have for for different uh, series an idea of what who was Pablo Escobar and what was the Medellin and Cali cartel. They, they were uh, the mafia structures in the 90s. But these structures were atomized when the cartels, the head of this, the capos of, this, uh, of these cartels were um, uh, liquidated for, for, the, for the US uh, government and the, uh, the Colombian police. And this uh, doesn't, and the drug trafficking that uh, widespread the uh, the leading and the instead of having big cartels uh, in Colombia start to operate uh, uh, um, little cartels um, and this combination is the combination occur. Uh, in the context of their political and economic reform, um, this this uh, uh, the, uh, the the reforms in the 1990s, there was a constitutional reform that was very interesting because open uh, the political uh, landscape in Colombia uh, gave participation to many actors that uh, used to be excluded. At the same time, permitted the uh, implementation of the neoliberal uh, model uh, of development, and also permitted uh, to constitute a very active social society.
third why uh, why to interpret the peace agreement as a process of political reconciliation and a source of conflicting among blocks of power in Colombia. So, uh, as I told you, uh, the, 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 the peace agreements of the 2007-16 uh, can be read as an act of political reconciliation. And you have to, uh, we have to, to talk about the, the existence of two blocks of power in Colombia. One is the liberal, urban, bourgeois uh, block of power, and other is the landlord's conservative block of power. I'm, I'm not talking about the, the, the social movements. They are not block of powers. I'm using the, the concept of block of powers more from, from uh, Gramsci. I, I don't have time to enter into this, uh, into, in, to, to describe this concept. In 2016, peace agreements represent the recognition that the armed conflict is the product of a political and economic exclusion. The peace agreement seeks to repair the political exclusion uh, caused by the National Front. The National Front was a way to finalize uh, a civil war uh, after the assassination of a liberal leader, Jorge Eliezer Gaitan. And the elites, liberal and conservatives, uh, decided to, uh, to um, to share the power and exclude other forces, uh, social democratic forces, communist parties, socialistic ideas. And in this context is where uh, 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 the guerrillas, all the guerrillas were, were born. Uh, for the landlords and the rural power bloc, the armed conflict uh, has no uh, social foundation, but is the product uh, of an attack of a foreign communist forces on Colombian institution. This has been the narrative, as I told you, uh, not just now in, the, in, the, in, the, in this context, but in the, in the history of Colombia. And for this way, they understand the, the peace agreement as a betrayal of the Uribe Vélez, he was, uh, uh, right wing um, uh, politician that uh, uh, ruled the government for 10 years. And the peace agreement was, uh, is interpreted for many people as a betrayal of his politics of, uh, of security. And that's represented uh, a, a very, uh, a, um, that reduce the influence, the, the presence of the guerrillas in the um, in, in in the territory, but also uh, open and expanded the, the presence of paramilitary groups and uh, uh, foster uh, and accelerate the force displacement. Uh, for these people, for this block of power. The peasants, the indigenous people, black communities are uh, backwards groups that have to leave the countryside to make sense, to make a space to productive mega projects, uh, uh, plantations of bananas, uh, uh, palm, uh, also for um, uh, uh, projects like uh, mining, etc. They say the peace of black and indigenous communities has created, create diverse alliances and have made progress in their territorial claims. This is an interesting thing. We, we have talking about the, uh, what the, the block of powers has achieved or what are the difference. But in this context, they, uh, there are many communities that have created an enormous knowledge about what means or what, what should be uh, the construction of peace. And they have also um, elaborated theoretically and practically 
uh, economic models. And it, this is, for example, very interesting because I, as, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, these are people mainly from displaced uh, population. This, and they, they have created uh, practical tools for, uh, for building peace and reconciliation in the middle of, of the conflict. And even uh, independent of the peace agreement, of the uh, implementation of the peace agreement. So this is one of the things that I am researching and we are discussing here in, in Vienna uh, of, of what, is, what is the content of these uh, political innovations of the people. And this is one thing that is, could be interesting for sharing uh, to discuss with uh, colleagues of, from, different, from different countries like, like uh, you. Fort, why? What explained the political exclusion and the lack of land reform? Uh, well, the doctrine of national security is one uh, uh, element that explains why the elites has not been engaged um, in the uh, uh, um, in the openness of uh, the political the political spectrum, and why the land reform has not taken place in, in Colombia. And uh, the, the doctrine of national security uh, uh, dim the uh, agrarian demons and the, the, uh, the demons of different social movements as menaces. Uh, and they, the elites uh, uh, understood the reforms that they ask as uh, security problems, not as legitimate social uh, special territorial questions, uh, problems, but as a, they, they understood and they narrated as a, a security problems. Uh, one thing that also explained uh, the political exclusion and the, lang the lack of land reform is the, that the elite have solved uh, the social problems uh, through the colonization of jungles of high mountains. Uh, Colombia is a place uh, where there are uh, many areas uh, inhabited or narrated as inhabited. And uh, the elites have just promoted the colonization. And this promotion of col uh, colonization is a way not just to not solve the problems of inequalities is also a way to expand the problems that were concentrated in the center to expand it in the colonization in the uh, areas of the colonization this is now uh, a, a big problem for uh, for the reconciliation for the ecological reconciliation that is also a subject that we are working on here uh, Strong and vocal social movements did not emerge in the context of the presence of guerrilla groups, nor in the context of political closure. Uh, and this is also interesting. The guerrilla uh, closed also the, the political uh, or, or, uh, or the voice of many uh, social movements. They were persecuted, the guerrilla persecuted uh, mobilizations of indigenous people, black communities, they co-opted or um, they were the social movements, the initiatives of local people, they, they, they were um, uh, understood as allies of one of the other parts of the conflict. And also uh, what explained the political exclusion and the lack of a land reform is the that the elite doesn't understand the country. Uh, they are, they conceive themselves that they have the mission to, the, to modernize uh, the people and the territory. And the uh, predominant narrative of the elites is the modernization and the development. And they, the materialization of these narratives is, is, uh, has been through the violence. Uh, the social movements say, in order that the development enters into the 
our territories, we have to, we, we, they, they have to expel it or they have expelled us. Um, and so the development, the modernization has been a violent process in, in Colombia because, and this is the, the fifth why, why has been the war of Colombia a product of the in, ignorance of the diversity of the country? The history of Colombia is one of denying the diversity through a series of mechanisms and divisions and simplification based on Eurocentric models of spirituality, speciality, culture, economy, and government. The elites, not just in, Latin, in Colombia, in Latin America, maybe uh, in the whole world, <laughs> has been very Eurocentric and they have, it, they have uh, seek to create institutions without a dialogue with uh, uh, or without taking into account the uh, the rudeness of their experience of or uh, including the voices of the population that inhabits the, the territories. The difference has been integrated as peripheral and a security problem. Uh, when I say the difference is, for example, the indigenous people, the black people, they have been considered as a security problem, not as a source of uh, uh, relating or creating new ways to uh, of uh, institutionality. They have been seen as people that has no concept, that people that have no institutions and has to be transformed in order to impose uh, other more modern and uh, uh, productive, because this is one in uh, one narrative also connected. These are unproductive uh, populations, and they have to be replaced for other uh, for uh, for other landscape, the landscape of productivity, the landscape of modernization and development. And the roots of the elites' habitus of denying and misunderstanding the diversity has its uh, backgrounds in the coloniality and the formation of the republic as a project of Creoles, or Criollos, Creoles, uh, without the indigenous, without the blacks, without the peasants. And the elites are, has been socialized with the complex of not being enough Europeans. And so uh, for me, this is maybe the fifth why that explain uh, 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 many of the conflicts that are uh, present in Colombia. And to finish, I want to uh, uh, reflect on different challenges of reconciliation that uh, this context represent. Of course, uh, the political reconciliation and there is a great challenge of not only opening the possibility that uh, the political debate be more diverse and to hear new voices and new groups, but also that the political difference be not violently, violently settled. Uh, this is a, a big challenge uh, in a society like, like Colombia. Uh, for example, um, uh, the 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 way in which the differences are um, uh, uh, discussed, yeah, the the role of the offenses, the political offenses, the prejudices. This is something in which we have to work a lot, and we are, for example, uh, very aware from from the work of the uh, the political offense from. Um, uh, Professor uh, Cristalina. In this perspective, peace and transformation of conflict must be a project of redesigning the territorial form of the state and a process of desecuritization. The, reconcili the, re the reconciliation means, or the political reconciliation means also desecuritize the narrative of the social problems. The changes are not a matter of just redefining borders or reforming the security sector. Instead, these, revolution, these revolutions are 
as the social movements understand it, a process of searching autonomy, building new forms of connection with non-human world and spirituality. This is a process that requires many levels of peace from, from, uh, from the notions of harmony to the notions of uh, or uh, security, social, uh, etc. And there is also, of course, in a deep Eurocentrism in the analysis of process of building peace and in the practices of actors of conflict. Uh, it entails to avoid explanation that violence is the result of lack of the state on lack of development. This is more the words of the social movements. And also, um, there is a, uh, challenges or uh, engagement in which we can be, uh, uh, we can participate, is more, make more visible the experiences of reconciliation and peace building uh, in the context of the implementation and also the, to make a history of these initiatives of, recon of reconciliation. And also, um, uh, there is uh, uh, um, responding to, in a certain way to the previous presentation. Uh, there, there is a necessity to understand the spatiality of reconciliation. The, the social movements has show us, uh, have shown us that the, uh, the uh, construction of peace, the reconciliation uh, is something that has to do with rebuilding sense of places to create new landscapes, new, uh, new territorialities. And yes, I want to finish in this and uh, wait for some comments and shares with exchange with the colleagues. Thank you. Okay, thank you, dear Luis. It is helpful and very deep a very deep report about the uh, Colombian conflict. And I think we have, we can see many parallels with, uh, with our, sorry, I need to, uh, okay, how can we just sharing? Ah, okay, yes, I'm still sharing. Yes, it's okay, okay, sorry. Uh, so I think we can see a lot of parallels with the conflict in, in Russian, Ukrainian, and Ukraine, and maybe civil war. Uh, probably we have also very, very different kind of conflict and very uh, deeper, different rooted conflict. And uh, dear friends, first of all, I want to, uh, to present our friends. I saw that Karina and friends from the United States are connected with us. And uh, hello. Uh, hello yes i'm i'm sorry i it's just happened benjamin knows about it that i have another event which i'm leading on research in uh, our school so i'm on both i'm on my phone in one meeting and here another it's meeting. Okay. But, it's okay. but it will be done by uh, should be done by 11. so i really um happy to be here and uh, i don't want to steal the time i will be have my own presentation i have it's thank you it's wonderful presentation i actually have a question i see that you have you really put idps um and protracted displacement as the key one of the key right for problems of reconciliation what do you think would specific you mentioned some but i would like to hear specifically what do you think should be specifically done to really promote ideas of reconciliation and help these people to be part of it. So my question, what should be done? Because for Ukraine, it's the same huge issue of protracted displacement. Yes, I, I would say uh, we have to uh, learn from, from the people that are uh, making initiatives of reconciliation. I mean, uh, uh, we have to, to start, the point of departure should be starting to recognizing that people have concept practices on of reconciliation. They, they have 
uh, introduce interesting innovations on reconciling and creative peace. And this is uh, all, uh, this is uh, an engagement in the research and, uh, that we can, uh, uh, we can take part. I mean, not to start in by imposing a theory of reconciliation, but promoting a dialogue between the academy and social movements to understand why, uh, what kind of inno political and conceptual innovations are they introducing in their practices. For example, in, in my research, I take uh, a lot of, uh, uh, of attention of the uh, motus, the slogans of the people, because they are not producing uh, books about reconciliation, but they have uh, motos that have a performative power and they uh, and have uh, the way in which they condense uh, epistemology. And this is, uh, for me, this is the, the first point of departure to recognize that people have concepts and these concepts are practical concepts, so to say. I would like to add something because there um, was already during the last presentation Anti Pentikainen who wrote into the chat also the, the question that uh, displaced peoples and refugees quite often have harsh views on the conflict and are very difficult for reconciliation. Um, I also can confirm this. Uh, this was also the first people I knew from refugees who were very much. Uh, hardliners, for example, Germans uh, formerly lived in regions where there's now Poland, how they spoke about the Polish people uh, and the reconciliation after the Second World War. But um, with the time I discovered that they are very diverse. Uh, in many uh, countries, uh, the refugees, uh, and that there are some very active for reconciliation. They have good memories of their neighbors and they want to have good relationships and there can be activists. And this is what I hear from uh, Luis as well, that many activists for reconciliation in, in uh, Colombia are um, internally displaced people. And, um, and also uh, we have this in Germany that refugees made organizations for reconciliation, for example, with uh, the Czech Republic and all these, uh, these things. And, and this is very interesting to uh, find uh, the different views in, in uh, uh, refugees and dis displaced people and to work with this. So, thanks. I just want to add a little thing. Uh, what Learn on uh, studying the, um, the social movements is to explain the value of reconciliation and this is something for example coming from a place like colombia or maybe is it your case in in, in ukraine or uh, russia uh, we are very concentrated on conflict analysis and the the uh, the scholars they don't understand the value of reconciliation and what we learn from from the uh from recon from, from the people they had to face the violence, the, the armed groups, and they had to, to, to serve reconciliation in the middle of conflict is that, that reconciliation is, is a value because it has to be with life, is the territorialization of life. And this is an answer that we have to, something that we have to explain to the people that are very, because uh, uh, they, they have a lot of mistrust. For example, my colleagues in, in Colombia, when you say uh, reconciliation, they, they, they laugh because they, they think this is something that is just giving the hand and, and saying uh, uh, ciao to the, to the, to the en former enemy. They have, no, uh, uh, they have no idea of the value of reconciliation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, great. I think it was wonderful, uh, wonderful discussion, and we can maybe keep it uh, just for now. It's it's a great that we have the discussions. I'm pretty, and um, just we didn't have a break, uh, so uh, 